come to standing, lift and roll the shoulders. And, sorry, I got distracted. Lift and roll the shoulders. Breathing in, turn the head to the left. And breathing out, turn the head to the right. In to the left. And out to the right. Come to the centre. Breathing in, circle the hands up, clasp and reverse, stretch up. Breathing out, lower the hands. And again, stretching up, reverse. Just slightly go from side to side. Come to the center and lower the hands. Lift and roll the shoulders. And then gently bring one hand in front of the abdomen, one hand at the lower back, and just turn slightly to the left, just bouncing and out. Come to the centre, and then the other hand to turn slightly to the right. and then come to the center. Lift and roll the shoulders. Lift your toes and just place the toes down so that your focus is balanced and then just very gently sway forwards and backwards to get your center of balance. And then pressing the feet down. Hands just press against the hips. And that lifts you. Hand on the abdomen. Again, it lifts you. And at the heart. And then release the hands. And just run along the spine from the tailbone all the way um, along the spine up to the top of the head. And then release the hands. So this is Tibetan, and we'll have a focus on the hips. So come to the top of the mat. Inhale, exhale, hands together. Inhale, circle the hands up, palms meet. Breathing out, bend the knees, bend the elbows, and roll down, hands to either side of you. Step back with your right foot, Stretch out the right leg, right knee on the ground. Left knee or left foot slides back so that the left knee is on the ground and you're in tabletop. Just sway the hips from side to side. And then dip the back and round the back. Cat to cow. And again, as you dip the back, and round the back, tuck the toes, tummy in, and come to downward facing dog. Knees can be bent, and just walk the dog. Your hips can sway too. Both knees back down to the earth. Hands to the left, right foot steps up, hands to either side of the right foot, and with a nod to the hip, let your right knee extend beyond the 90 degrees to get into the right hip. But to come out and up, bring your um, knee back to that 90 degree angle um, so that you've got a support for your right foot and knee 
as you bring your tummy or lower abdominal muscles in, tap your perineum slightly in and up, tap the left foot underneath and lift the left knee and step the left foot to the right foot. Hands on the shins, half lift. Breathing out, soften the knees, soften the elbows. Breathing in, hands on the shins, half lift. Stay here as you breathe out. And breathing in, press the feet into the ground, soften the knees and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And hands up. And then lower the hands. Lift and roll the shoulders. Clasp the hands behind you. Aim the knuckles to the floor. Take an in and an out breath. Separate the hands and slide the fingers down the backs of your legs. To hands either side of you, step back with your left foot. Stretching out the left leg, high for the moment. Then lower your left knee, slide the right um, foot back so that you're on tabletop. And just sway the bottom from side to side. You can look over one shoulder and then the other shoulder. And then the classic cat cow, dipping the back. Rounding the back, chin comes to the chest. Dipping the back. And as you round, chin to chest, tuck the toes underneath, tummy engages, and come to your soft downward dog. Feel free to adjust your feet wider or come closer to your hands. And walk the dog by bending one knee and then bending the other knee. Extend both legs and then bend both knees to the ground. Hands go to the right and let your left foot come up. Hands either side of your left foot. And again, just let the left knee extend beyond the 90 degree angle to stretch into that left hip. Tummy in, bring the knee back to 90 degrees. Tuck the right foot, tummy in. Lift up the right knee and step the right foot to the left, hands onto the shins, lengthening half lift, breathing out, softening, bending in. Lengthening half lift. Stay here as you breathe out. And breathing in, press the feet down as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Raising the hands up, stretching the fingers, and circling the wrists down. And then coming to the center of the mat, we'll just do a half salute to wind down before we come to the floor. Hands together at the palm center, circling the hands up, stretching up, touch the palms, bring them through the center, Bend the elbows, bend the knees, hands onto the shins. Breathing in, half lift. Breathing out, soften forward. Breathing in, half lift. Stay here as you breathe out. And breathing in, soften the knees, press the feet down, and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Hands up and circle the wrists down. Open and close the fingers. Hands at the palm center. And then we're going to come to seated position, the legs out in front. Starting now at the base chakra for a variation of um, Janus's asana, which is said to me pose. So just have the knees out in front. If you need a bit cushion to push under your knees or thigh, then have it handy, but 
it's just an option, it's not mandatory by any means. Just balance your feet, extend the heels, toes up, and toes then away a couple of times. And then begin to circle the ankles in one direction. And then begin to circle the ankles in the other direction. And then stretch the toes and then relax them. And then just uh, move the feet from side to side. That invert, invert sort of movement. Bounce the legs and then just rather tap your legs just to boost the circulation on this very uninspired, dull, damp, chin day. Very typical of winter, I know. Very grateful that we haven't got is it Storm Arwen. And then just legs out in a V. And bend your right knee, so that the right sole of the foot is facing towards the inner left hand thigh. You might at this point or might not want to have a cushion underneath your right thigh. Just touch your fingers to the floor to sit up and turn the torso slightly towards your outstretched left leg. Breathing in, circle the arms up, palms together. I've also got my thumbs linked together for additional strength. Tummy in and then bend your elbows to slide the hands along the shin. In Janu Sivasana, just take a couple of breaths here. Feel that um, difficult, but feel that both sides are extending evenly, almost impossible I'd say, but just try not to crunch up too much on one side. You're opening the lower hip, the right hip, so again we're bringing focus back onto the hip, the lower lymphatic system. It's a forward bend, so it's calming for the nervous system, and it's a slight rotation supported by your hands on your shin, so it becomes very, um, um, becomes one of the, the movements for the back that you need for optimal back health. And then you can either stay where you are, or if you want to explore walking your hands down a little bit further, you can hold your big toes, left big toes, or you can hold either side of your left foot. Or the third expression would be to hold the outside of your left foot with your right hand, and your left hand goes behind your left hip, and your head, and you're along the neck, you're just looking either at the floor or behind towards your left hand, that's stronger. And then to come out, tummy in, engage the perineum, and slide your right hand up the left shin, hands once more to either side of you, touching on the mat, you're sitting up straight. And then just raise your left hand to look at your left thumb. And then lower the left hand. And you can remove the right um, the support under your right thigh if you've got it. Bend up your left leg so that your feet, your knees are in a double V. And this is one of five perfect hip health exercises. You can even watch the television um, and have support behind your back. And hands, wherever they're comfortable, possibly touching on the mat, but wherever, just turn the head to one side, it doesn't matter which, because you're going to be turning the head and turning to the other side. Turn to one side. and turning to the other side. And then coming back to the centre, tummy in. Just touch your hands on the ground to lean back. Bring your knees up and then extend the legs again and bounce the knees. Maybe rub them just to 
again boost that circulation. And then we're going to be coming to the other side. So legs of a little V. I'm trying to think now. I think it's bending up the left knee. Do correct me if I'm wrong. Left knee. Tips. That's all right, that's right, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Let, um, take less left um, a, a bolster or something underneath your left thigh if that works for you. You don't have to extend the right heel. Just touch the hands to either side of your hips, lengthening the body. And then turn the torso towards the right outstretched leg. Circle the hands up, touching palms or connecting thumbs together and then soften the elbows to come over the right leg, Stretch, uh, leap, having the hands on the shins, the right shin. And again, if you press your hands down, have a sense of lengthening either side of your body so that you're not crunching up on the right side. That's very difficult, and I do agree, but just it's an observation or a thought. And again, you'll feel the opening on the left hip. And then again, you can stay here or just extend your hands a little bit further down the leg. Taking hold of your right foot or not, however that works for you. And then tummy in to slide the left hand up the right leg. Bring your body back to centre, just raise the hands up, touch at the centre, palms, and then come through the heart. Just support your left uh, knee to just stretch it up and then extend the left leg out. Again, just bounce your legs. Um, rub your legs, tap them, and then we're going to come to um, Vadakanasana, which is called Band Angle Pose. It has ticks many boxes, but one of them is the hips. So soles of the feet together. You're now opening both of the groins. There are three expressions. The classic yoga is to have your hands over your toes and thumbs on top of each other. That is the first one. You probably need your feet closer to your perineum for that. You can have your feet a little bit more of a relaxed pose, slightly further away from your perineum, and just use your thumbs to massage the insteps of both um, feet, soles of both feet. Or the third expression is to hold the ankles or above the ankles, and your back will sit up straight so whichever position suits you. And then you can just bounce your knees as an option. Or use your thumbs also to just massage the ins, the, the soles of the feet. Remembering that the lower lymphatic system um, in reflexology um, is the, the ankles, both inner and an outer ankle bone, and then the upper lymphatic system under the arms, um, for instance, and respiratory is the tops of the feet, in between the little bones, just stroking from the big toe up towards the um, top of the foot. And then just come to a cross-legged position. And hold your knees, or just below your knees. It, it bring, um, it's almost like clenching your bottom. Um, your perineum, everything tightens and then just release. Tighten and release. In fact, your bottom sort of gets left out of it, and that is a classic um, Muladhara hold, not to include the bottom, but it's sometimes difficult to leave it out. But it tones the inner pelvic floor, digestive, bottom of the GI tract sort of thing, but the um, good for pelvic health. And then sitting up, holding your knees or below your knees, a cat-cow, so sitting up, breathing out, chin to chest, 
A couple of these before we transition from the base chakra to the neck chakra. The Shvadisthala chakra, which is situated between the um, perineum and the navel, so it's connecting to the element of water and the kidneys, the adrenal gland sitting on top of the kidneys. Hug the knees in, just have your knees bent, just slightly hugging them in. And then come to lying on the ground. And you can have a bolster or a cushion handy. Again, this is entirely optional. If you do, then have it to your left side because we're going to be stretching the legs out along the floor. Keep the left leg extended and hug the right knee into the chest. And again, an added hip movement. If you just circle the right knee in a couple of direct uh, circles one way. And then circle the knee a couple of times in the other direction. And then hugging the right knee into the chest. Rock your whole body over to the left. You might like to use your elbow to support you. Your right knee remains bent and your right uh, knee might rest on a cushion or the thigh might like rest on a cushion. Hand on your right waist, left hand on your right thigh, looking either up to the ceiling or just turn slightly to look towards the right wherever your head naturally goes. If you want to extend this further, you can raise your right hand up above you. It can be bent at the elbow, it can rest the back of the hand on the floor, you can open the hand out to the right a little bit, just wherever feels comfortable, or stay with your hand on your waist. And to further get into this pose, extend the left heel. So it's a very um, supported rotation. And to come out of this, tummy in, roll onto your back, hug the knees into the chest, just slightly rock from side to side. If you are using a support or pillow cushion, take it to the right side of you and then extend the right leg along the floor and hug the left knee into the chest. And then just start to circle the left knee a couple of times in one direction. Again, the focus is on the hips and hip health. And then just very gently circle the left knee in the other direction. And then hugging the left knee into the chest, maybe use your left elbow if you need to support yourself to rock your entire body over onto the right side. Your left knee is bent. If you're using the support, your left knee in the thigh will come to be supported by the bolster. Left hand on the waist, right hand somewhere on the left thigh, and looking either up or slightly to the left. Extend the right heel, and you have an option to stay where you are with the left hand, or extend the left hand up above you. Elbow can be bent or extend out to the side. You'll feel a real stretch if you extend your left arm out diagonally to the corner of the mat or beyond, but wherever you feel comfortable. And then very gently come back to roll onto your back. And then hug you might like to bring both feet to the floor, knees up to the ceiling to just square yourself off, pressing down on your feet, just squaring your hips. 
realigning your hips. And then again, hip health, hugging the knees into the chest. Breathing in, let the knees extend to hip width apart. Then open the knees in a V so that you're circling them back. And they meet together, hugging your knees into your chest. Breathing in, still holding the knees, let them drift to arms length apart. Open the knees in a V, away from one another. And then circle the knees around so that they meet back together as you hug your knees into the chest. And do that a couple of times to your own breath pattern. If you want to have an added awareness of your core in this movement, you would turn your fingers so that they're pointing down towards the feet and let your tummy do the work, not your hands. But that's entirely optional because the focus of this pose at the moment is on the hips. And so because the hips are being moved, the upper um, leg is moving in the hip socket, I'm not so worried about the core because that's not the focus in this particular instance, but it's an added thing if you wanted to include it. And then of course we're going to reverse that by hugging the knees into the chest, then open the knees away from one another, circling them and getting them to meet at arm's length as you circle the knees um, away from you. Hug the knees together into the chest once they're hugged in, open the knees apart so that they um, are representing a V with the knees, and then circle them to meet at the top. And just do that a couple of times in your own breath pattern. This is such a brilliant exercise, I think, because you are beginning to move the leg and the hip socket, giving it its full rotation. You're not putting any pressure anywhere. It's just a freestyle, very safe hip movement. And then moving on from the hip movement, just support drop one, your right foot down to the ground right knee up to the ceiling, hug your left knee into your chest and come to a half happy baby. So classically your hand would go to the inside of your foot and your fingers would be facing outwards but there is a trend to hold the outside of the foot too these days. So you hold the base of your foot however that works for you. Sum the foot up to the ceiling and the knee is bent um, towards the ground. So again, you'll feel this half-happy baby to open the hip in a slightly different way. Your right hand can go wherever it can go on your right hip, just to relax it. Just check that your chin's not up to the ceiling, that you're relaxed in the back of the neck. And then just very gently use both hands perhaps to hug the, right, the left knee into the chest and place the left foot on the floor. And we're going to then go to the other side, hugging the right knee into the chest and come to half happy baby on the right side, holding the inside or the outside of the foot, whatever that works for you. Inside of the foot is more yogic, but outside is used these days as well. So whatever you want. And again, you'll feel this in the hip. And then very gently lower the right foot to the ground, hug the knees into the chest. Just slightly rock from side to side. And then come once more to the very familiar, hugging the knees into the chest. Still hold them and let them drift to arm's length a couple of times. And then we're going to do a lying forward bend, which is a contradiction in terms. But if you imagine sitting up and coming forward, the shape of the body is exactly the same as either holding the hands underneath the thighs to raise the legs up to the ceiling 
or then start to walk the hands up the back of the legs. And again, this will entirely depend on your arm length. You might be able to hold the backs of your uh, calves, the backs of your ankles, or if you've got long arms, you can hold your big toes. And again, as I said, it's nothing to, other than to do with the length of your arms. If you're holding your toes, you can just slightly sway from side to side. And then very gently release that, hug the knees into the chest. Place the feet on the floor, hands either on the abdomen or hands out in a T or an A, and then just very gently windscreen wipe the feet, the knees from side to side. You might like to bring the head to join in the movement, and the head classically would move in the opposite direction from the knees, so away from the knees. But if you find your head drifting in the same direction, that's fine too. And then very gently coming to bring the knees back to the center, hugging the knees into the chest once more. And then rolling to the side, come onto your hands and knees. And we transition from the uh, second chakra, the sacral chakra, up to the Manipura chakra, which is behind the navel. So this is a journey through our energy centers, our chakras. And we're going to come to a classic cat cow on hands and knees. Dipping the back. Either looking up or along the mat and rounding the back. And then again, dipping and round. And to neutral. I'm going to, um, so that you can perhaps see better, I move my hands to the right, step up my left foot, and then move my hands back to either side of my left foot. You can take support under your right knee, and if your balance wobbles, you can move your left foot to the left, a little bit more towards the edge of the mat. Tummy in as you lean up, kneel up. Right hand raises upwards, and tummy in, bring the right hand over the left elbow, palms together. The left palm presses down on the right, to lift you up at the heart centre and then just turn the head, the back of the neck is long to look behind you as if you're laying your head on a pillow. There are more advanced versions where you would lift your right knee off the ground. That's a much stronger rotation. Tummy in as you come back out of this. Hands either side of your left foot Tuck your right toes underneath, lift up your right knee and step your right foot to your left foot. You can keep your knees bent and you can keep your feet hip width apart and hold your big toes, keeping your knees as bent as you need to so you're making a perfect circle of energy. Breathing in, pull on your big toes slightly to stretch your back Breathe out, soften your knees and soften your elbows. Again, just stretching, lengthening the back and then just softening. Release your hands from under your big toes and slide your left leg back and left knee kneels on the ground. And your right um, knee, foot goes out to the right if you need to. In this exercise, you put an invitation to keep your back left toes tucked under, which is the classic version because it stabilizes your back, or flat is a more normal way. But so classically, it's always in this position, tucked under, so choose which you want. Kneel up, raising the left hand, tummy in, and bring the left elbow over the right knee thigh. Hands come together in prayer. 
press your right hand, palm down to the left, lift you at the heart center, and then turn behind you, chin to chest, the back of the neck long, for an in and an out breath. And then tummy in to support you to come out of this, hands either side of your right foot. The right toes are tucked under if they're not already. Lift the left knee and step um, the left foot to the right foot. And once more you can soften the knees to hold either the big toes, as we did before, or if you want to extend it now, you can lift your feet and place your fingers underneath your soles of your feet. So it's a stronger, but go back to the other one if you want to. Soften your knees as much as you need to. And as you breathe in, lengthen all the way along your spine and breathe out, softening, bending the knees and bending the elbows. And then very gently take the hands out from under the feet. And we're going to just come back down to the mat, onto our backs. For um, a leg lift. So knees bent, bottom on the ground. With leg lifting, I'm going to obviously do a very modified version. Hands, palms down on the floor. Bend the left knee into the chest. Extend the left foot, sole of the foot to the ceiling. And you can then lower the left leg to the ground. Bending the left knee into the chest. Extend the left foot up to the ceiling. I've had an interruption when it's gone back. It might be upside down. Oh, no, it's good. And then lower the left leg down to the ground. You can um, point the toes and then at the very end just extend the heel. And then bend the left knee into the chest, hugging the left knee into the chest, and place the left foot back down onto the ground. Plumon tried to call me then, and it just blew me I'm up the screen up. Uh, bring the right knee into the chest, right sole of the foot up to the ceiling, extend the right heel, and then lower the right leg. If that's too much for you, you can bend the right leg, heel, and then lower it. Extend the right heel just before you get to the ground and then or however you want to. Bend the left knee into the chest, sole of the right foot, sorry, right, right leg up to the ceiling and then lower the right foot down to the ground. And then hug the knees into the chest and just rock from side to side. We're going to then come to rock up or roll to the side to a seated position. This is very good for the hips. Um, I don't do it in class very often because it's a little bit more um, challenging for the hips, but well, give it a go. So kneel up. I'm hoping this is going to be clear. I'm going to have my right foot up. You can get to this many ways. You bring my right foot over and then sit back down again. So it's like cow position. Uh, that will, you'll really feel that on your right outer hip. Just hold your right knee as you sit up. And then turn to look over your right shoulder. Your left hand stays on your right knee and your right hand goes behind. Breathing in, lengthening the body and breathing out, turn to the right. So this is a piriformis stretch. Very good for the hips again. Come back to holding your right knee. Hands either side of you as you come kneel forward and you're going to unravel your legs so that then the right um, knee goes behind, the left knee comes in front and just switch sides. 
and sit back. So it's a cow position. So it's the, um, the feet that represent ears on the cow. You can always have a cushion under your bottom. And again, you'll feel this now on the left um, hip. And it's a piriformis muscle that uh, is your feel. And then holding the left knee with both hands, sitting up. Keep the right hand on your left knee, left hand behind you, and turn to look over your left shoulder. Come back to the center, hands either side of you. And then we're going to effectively come to standing. So roll forward on both knees, hands in front of you, unravel your legs. And then coming, rolling up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And we're going to lifting the head last. Going to come to a warrior. Feet stepping out, left foot in, right foot out. If you drew a line, the line from your front right heel should intersect the mid part way of your mid part of your back left arch. You can have your feet wider than me, um, but to your own comfort. Just hands on the waist. Feel that you can adjust a bit more and then drop the body centrally and the right knee will bend. But feel you're dropping your weight centrally, putting the weight on the back and part of the left heel. And then turn to look over your right knee and then optionally raise your arms. If that's too much, you might like to bend your left hand on your left waist and just look beyond the third finger of your right hand. And then drop your left hand to the back of the left thigh, straighten your right leg and just look up to your right thumb. Lower the right hand, Come to straighten your feet and then turn the right foot in, the left foot out as we're reversing the warrior. Drop the weight, mindful of the left knee not coming in too much. It's aiming towards perhaps the second and the, the big toe and the second toe or the second and third toe, but it's not coming in. Right hand on the waist, left hand up, looking beyond the third finger of your left hand. And optionally then just opening it to a full warrior two. Keep an attention on the back and the right heel of the weight going to that. And then drop the right hand to the back of the left, the right thigh. Straighten the left leg and just look up to your um, left thumb. Lower the left hand. Come to heel toe, the feet in a little bit more, to hip width apart. And we come to the Tibetan triangle, lift and roll your shoulders. Raise the right arm, turn it so that the inner part of the right arm almost touches the right ear. Left hand on the left thigh, stretching over. Chin in, tummy in, press the feet down to come up. Lower the right arm and then snake the left arm up, tummy in, hold the right thigh, come over. Feel that you're between two panes of glass, so you're not coming forward. That looks very nice actually, very nice. Tummy in, press the feet down, coming up and just slide the hands down the thighs. Maybe the hands go to the inside elbows as it's just a compensation forward bend. Having done warrior and triangle. And then just very, very gently roll up. Circle the hands up, clasp and reverse. And we're going to do a balance by lifting, adjust your feet if you need to, lifting the heels. Well done. And when you're ready, lower your heels, lower your hands. 
and feet hip width apart as so we come to a very familiar swaying from side to side. And then start to slow the swaying down. And come to stillness, lift and roll the shoulders and adjust the feet if you need to. And then we're coming to hands together. And we're going to come to lie on our tummies in um, very briefly a sphinx pose. So lying on tummies, so I'm going to come into kneeling first, then to lying on my tummy, elbows on my elbows. We're looking at the floor, adjusting the elbows, and just wobbling the bottom from side to side. Tuck the right toes underneath, lift the whole right leg off the ground, extending the right heel backwards, stretching out the right front hip, and then release the leg back, right leg back down to the ground. Wobble the bottom, let the heels fall outwards. Tuck the left toes under, lift the entire left leg a millimetre or two off the ground, extending the right left heel backwards, and then release the left leg to the ground. Jelly wobble, wobbling the bottom from side to side. Let the elbows go out to the sides so as you can rest your head on top of your hands, either make fists or on the backs of your hands. Your head can be down or can be to the side. Knees slightly wider apart, lift the soles of the feet to the ground and just windscreen wide for the head and the knees, from the legs from side to side. Again, this feels quite nice on the front of the hip. Lower the legs, bring the knees fractionally together. And then we're going to do something we don't often do in class. Uh, something I love, but you'll see why we don't often do it. It has a focus on the hips. So coming to kneeling, however, that works. I'm pressing my hands down and come up to kneeling, but you can roll to the side. Come to tucking your toes and come to a downward dog. Soft downward dog. Then come to your knees again and slide your right knee forward and your left leg goes back. So this is like a half pigeon. If you want to um, bring your right knee a little bit more to the right, then that's fine, that's a more of a pigeon. You'll feel it on the hips. Stay up, that might be enough for you. If you want to come forward, you can lean your body forward and stretch your arms out in front of you. So this is beginning to open into the right hip. And a full pigeon would bring the right knee to the right and wiggle the right foot to the left, but that can be quite strong. I'm going to make fists with my hands and rest my forehead on my hands. And you can just rock your body from side to side. So again, it's rocking into that right hip. It can be very satisfying. But obviously it's a stronger pose than the normal hip movement that we make. And then this is just really a taster to come to press your hands down, come back up high, and then lifting yourself slightly to slide your right leg back. Tuck the toes to coming into a very soft downward dog again, hardly just bending your knees. And then bring the knees back down to the ground, sliding your left knee forward. Coming up onto your hands or fingertips as you slide your right leg back. Feel that you can uh, bring your left knee to the left and you, your left toes slightly to the right inwards. But Either way, you can just wiggle from side to side up here, and that can be very satisfying on the hips. Just sway from side to side, and then optionally, you can lay your body over your front left leg, 
stretching out or making fists with your hands. Come to a relaxation over your left thigh. And again, when you're down, you can just rock slightly from side to side. The more you rock over to the left, the more you'll feel that in your left hip. But it's quite nice to sway gently from side to side. And to come out of it, just bring your, come to centre, bring your tummy in slightly, walk back up again, and then just slide your legs back. Just slightly rock from side to side with your hips. And then just come to, we're going to come to line our knees up. Coming to um, a variation of bridge, feet are hip width apart. Palms down and just a couple of pelvic tilts. Again, around the pelvis area. Focus there. We're uh, coming up now. Um, the warriors were the, the heart area, and we're now coming and focusing on the throat. So press the feet into the ground, lift the bottom, raise the hands up, bend at the elbows. It's a soft bridge, chin comes to the chest. You're focusing on the throat centre, breathing out, lower the bottom to the ground, the hands lower, and then hugging the knees into the chest. And just rocking from side to side. And we'll do that one more time, feet on the ground, palms down, flattening the back, lifting the bottom, lifting the arms, bent at the elbows, chin in, and then very gently rolling down, hugging the knees into the chest. Just rocking from side to side. And then we're going to come to a seated position, coming however you want. Classically, you would roll to the right, away from the heart, and come up, but now I'm going to rock up slightly. Come into a cross leg position. And we're moving now from the throat to the Ajna center, the third eye. So, coming to just place the hands to either side of your head, connecting to your energy. And then just place one hand at the forehead on the third eye and one hand at the nape of the neck. You might want to bring your head fractionally forward so that the back of the neck is slightly longer, but whatever works for you. You can just very gently press with your fingers or make a circle around the third eye area, just connecting to that pineal and pituitary energy, part of our metabolic control. And then to drop the hand from the nape of the neck, to the heart set to keep the other hand at the forehead. And then keep the hand at the heart and drop the other hand to the uh, navel. Head, uh, so heart, gut, connection. And just then bring the hands to the heart. Have a thought for the day, if you need or would like to have a thought for the day. And then just very gently bringing the chin to the chest, taking a bow for yourself for the day ahead. And thank you very much for joining me today.